Hello, welcome to this lesson in calculus limits. We're going to solve some additional limits where you end up generally having to factor some sort of way. Again, you're going to see some things in this section that you probably wouldn't have thought of on your own. But you know what? Don't get discouraged by that. It's all a game, you know? When I first learned calculus, I didn't know all these little ways to tackle the problem. I don't even want to call them tricks. They're not really tricks. It's just that you, 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 you get a feel for the different problem types and how to proceed because you've seen so many of them. And that's exactly what we're trying to do is build your confidence. So this first one here is one that I definitely would not have known how to solve very first time of calculus, you know, just coming right out studying calculus for the first time. But once you understand what to do, um, then it'll be okay. So we have the function x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1, and you're going to try to find that limit. So again, the very first thing you're going to do is take this value of 1 and plug it in you're going to immediately run into a problem. This will be a 1 minus 1. This will be a 1 minus 1. So again, you get your, your 0 over 0 that I keep telling you is undefined and not really very useful. Um, so then you look and say, well, hey, I can do a table. Of course you can. But ultimately, we want to try to factor and solve this guy. But this is not a difference of two squares because this is x cubed. Now, you may know how to factor this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't actually off the top of my head. Um, but it's certainly not as easy as a difference of two squares. And on the bottom, there's no difference of two squares. And I'm looking for a common factor of x or something to pull out of here, and I don't see anything. So I'm, I'm stuck. This is the kind of problem that a student will get to, you know, straight into Calculus 1 and just not really know what to do. Well, don't forget, though, that I've kinda, I kind of gave you the punchline. If you get a 0 over 0, then you know that you have to be able to simplify this. Otherwise, there's no way for you to get the answer. And that's just... That's just a fact. So if you get on a test and you get 0 over 0, then there has to be a way to simplify it. You just have to figure out the way to do it. So there has to be a way. It's not unsolvable, OK? Um, the second thing is, if you try the easy things, factoring difference of two squares, and you get stuck, then you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and do some brute force, OK? You're going to guess, you're just going to guess that this top thing can be factored into x minus 1 times some other stuff because you expect to be able to cancel the bottom and the top. So you expect that whenever you, um, if you were to actually divide these two things, then I would get a new expression there, okay, that would then be able to be used. The bottom line is this is a fraction just like any other fraction. What is the fraction 8 halves? Well, you take 8 divided by 2, that's 4. What is the fraction, you know, 20 tenths? It's 20 divided by 10, right? That's 2. Right? Well, this is basically algebra. This guy, this fraction, it's got some polynomial on the top, and it's got a polynomial on the bottom. And we try to factor and simplify, but we can't do that. So ultimately, it's a division problem. You're going to have to divide the top by the bottom number and see if it divides evenly into a new polynomial or a new series of expressions that make it easier. Okay? So I know you don't want to hear this because it's, it's just a pain in the rear end, but the way to do this is to divide. And if you've forgotten how to do that, then we're going to do a little review here. We have x cubed minus 1, that's the top number, and we're dividing it by what's on the bottom, x minus 1. This is the problem we have to solve, and hopefully if we're right, then we're going to be able to get some, um, some answer up here that's going to make sense, and I'm not going to give it away too much, but that's basically what we have to do. Um, you have learned how to do this in algebra at some point. If you haven't, you probably should go back and review that. We're going to do it here clearly but it's something that is useful to solve these types of limit problems. The first thing you do is, let me switch colors actually. You really only look at the x and the x cubed first, and you ask yourself, how many times can x go into 